Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm on here because I shared some exciting news with you guys last week about how I started this partnership with a, an amazing app called Extempore. Um, well, I also wanted to show you guys how um, you could use that app when you are creating some assessments. So, and the reason why I thought about this was because we all know we're in the middle of access and we're going full force and we're going to get it done before March. But when you, before you begin, if you're at a large site and actually if you're at any site, and you have kids who you feel like could test out, you wanna prepare them for different portions of the assessment. Me in particular, I think it's super beneficial to prepare them for speaking because that's just like an abstract, like this person is talking to me in a headphone and I'm just supposed to act like this is a real person and like respond to them as if I were just talking to somebody who was sitting across the table from me. Um, so that part is uh, a tricky part it's a little bit, like I said, abstract. So I would say practice that, absolutely. But also, if you have an opportunity to create assessments um, throughout all four domains that resemble access, I say do that as well. Um, but anyway, I'm just gonna focus on speaking activities, um, practice activities for our students. So I'm just gonna sh take you through the whole process. I'm gonna show you what I do or what I have done um, and then show you how you could do the same thing and think you through how you might want to implement this with your kids. Obviously not this year, but next year. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm up here. The first thing I do is I want to go to the page on um, access. And it's just, I mean, if you want to take this link, um, I can link it below, whatever. Um, and so you just want to go to the link, right? Um, and you're looking at these practice assessments. Do not go to, it's one that makes you put in a, um, this one I think, that makes you put in a password or whatever. Don't worry about that. So what I would do is come here first. So let's say we're looking at grade one and grade one really needs to practice. Um, they're speaking because they are, you know, I know that this is not gonna be something that they're familiar with. So first I'm just gonna look on WIDA's site and see what their sample question looks like to get an idea of where I should be taking my students. So let's see. Let's talk about a story. Look at the picture. This boy's name is Pablo. Pablo and his dad are at the grocery store. Okay, cool, cool. All right, what's the question? This is Miss Kent. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see, what is the question? Okay, yeah. So Nina, what are two things you see in this picture? So the, the first question is just sort of asking the student to describe the picture in tier A. <clears throat> is asking the student to describe the picture in more detail. They hear an example or a model and then they follow suit. Pablo and his dad see bananas. Okay, I'm looking for the next question to see what level of speech they're asking for. Now it's your turn. Tell me about how Miss Kent helps Pablo and his dad. Okay, so it took them through sort of like a day at the grocery store and how, and how this uh, grocer helped the boy and his dad. Okay, so I mean, literally it's what, two questions, right? So we can take those two questions and use them as a model when we are creating our assessment, right? All right, so I have a little tab here with the visuals that I've created for Extempore. And just, I'm gonna show you one of the ones that I created for first grade. And so it was all about animals and we were um, similar to the way it's set up for um, uh, practice access, um, I would take this picture, first ask the students to sort of like describe the animals and then move into something that's more complex. So at first I'm just showing them the cheetah and the elephant, and then I move into showing them all four and maybe ask them like their preference, which an animal is your favorite? So, and this is just tier A. We can also look at it, an example of tier B and get some ideas um, from that as well. But we're just thinking about tier A right now. So if you go to home in, a, in Extempore, um, I'm gonna just log in. Obviously I have an account. If you do not, you're going to click here, open a free account. Um, and if your district has an account, obviously you're going to use your um, 
Google information, right? Um, usually it prompts me to click on my Google information, but I don't know, maybe I've been logging into it so much <laughs> that it's not prompting me to do that right now. So when you go in and this, we could have a whole session about setting up extempore, but I digress. So I um, already have classes set up. Um, and I'm just gonna hop into this class. Um, so yeah, your class houses all of your assessments. You can go over here and you can edit your class. You can make a copy of your entire class, all of the assessments in it, or you could share your class. You would just take the link and send it to someone who also has access to Extempore and then they could open up everything that's inside of your class. But anyway, let's go into how we create the assessment. So once you get into your class, this assessment button is here. So we're gonna click plus, right? And then you just give your assessment a name. So you could say grade one, tier A speaking. And then this start time, due time doesn't matter. And we're going to show all of the parameters and this already exists. So I'm just gonna say sample, okay? And then I'm gonna describe my assessment. This assessment is to practice for WIDA access, okay? And then all of these things down here, I mean, you can do lots of different things with it, but it's not necessary. So just for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna sort of skip through that and click next. Okay, so then I'm going to title my question. I'm gonna title this sample one all right and similar to how this has writing um this sample access question has writing but also we know if you've ever administered access before that there is audio and then like a lady is reading about um whatever she whatever these words say she's reading them um to the student in their earphones and then that's how they respond so similar because we want them to practice um that sort of like uh, template, I guess, for answering questions, I'm gonna do the same thing. So if I'm saying um, here is a picture of a cheetah and an elephant, um, I see that the cheetah has stripes or something like that, stripes and a long tail. Can you tell me about the elephant? Okay. And then what I would do is I would upload a picture and I'm just literally going to upload whatever my last screenshot was. I don't know what it was, but I'm just gonna upload it. Obviously you're gonna have the screenshot of the picture that you want to go in there, right? And then once you upload your screenshot, you click on the audio button and then you click record and you read verbatim. Uh, I don't know what I wrote on the page because it is covering my words, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to record just as an example. Amazing. And I click stop recording. I can listen to my and recording. Read verbatim. Uh, I don't know what I wrote on the page because it is covering my words, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to record just as an example. Amazing. And you read verbatim. All right. And then if you say, okay, that's cool. I like that. And I read off of um, the page and it's fine. I'm going to click use audio. And then the student will have the opportunity to respond to that. Now, obviously this was one sort of like drawback. Um, what I was noticing was when you click that audio button, it does pop up in front of the box where you wrote your text. So what I started doing was I would just take a picture with my phone and I would have my phone, um, I would have my phone in my hand and I would be reading off of my phone and um, looking at, instead of looking at the words. That I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Basically just use your phone to take a picture. All right, so we're gonna go back and then I'm going to click next because I want to save that. And then let's see, where is it, where is it? Let's see, grade one, maybe it's down at the bottom. Yes, here it is. Okay, so, and I wanna view it as a student because I wanna see what the student is going to see. So anytime you want it to, um, to view it as a student, I'm gonna click view as a student. And then I go into the student side of things. 
And what I have to look for is the class name. So it's here, assessment creation class for extempore. And then um, it pops up here. Okay. And then sometimes what I was noticing too, I think because of that due date or like the dates that I said didn't matter, it would show up here as past due. So like a lot of my assessments are here as past due, but um, they're there, right? So you can click active, past due, future, completed, whatever. If you can't find it, scroll through. Um, if you want to be super specific with your date, then and you want it to like pop up as active when you come in here, then yes, do it that way. But for me, because I'm just sort of creating these assessments that I feel like will be used um, by people who are just coming in here, then I didn't um, set it up that way. But you obviously can. So I would click there <clears throat> and there's that one question that we created and this is what the student would see. So they see my picture and what I love, a feature that I love about this is you can make it, or the student can make it larger so even as they're listening to it and if they're like, wait, I can't see what, what the um, voice is saying, they can enlarge it. All right, so I'm going to let you see what it looks and sounds like. Can you read verbatim? Uh, I don't know what I wrote on the page because it is covering my words. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to record just as an example. Amazing. Okay, and so obviously the recording would say, can you tell me about the elephant? And so here's the student. The elephant is big and gray. The elephant has a really long trunk and huge ears. And then they get to listen to their own recording. The elephant is big and gray. The elephant has a really long trunk and huge ears. Okay, and then they submit their attempt. It's just that easy. Okay, and then you can just go in here and you would see whatever submissions the student has given, um, how many students have registered, et cetera, so on and so forth. So that was my little really quick tutorial about um, extempore and how quick and easy it is to set up these assessments that resemble um, the sample items that you can get straight off of the WIDA website and use them for your students. Now, obviously, we're not giving these assessments to all of our students just because there are newcomer students that we don't necessarily, I mean, we want them to get familiar again with the format, but we don't necessarily um, feel like they're um, ready to be pushed to test out and or would they even benefit from testing out? Like receiving ESOL services is gonna be something that's going to uh, benefit them more so than testing out. So we're not really targeting them so much as we're targeting those students who are like, um, maybe at like a level three or four, and we know if we push them just a little bit and we prep them that they would be, you know, that they would fly on this assessment and potentially test out. <clears throat> so if you have any questions, if you wanna think through how to set up your assessments um, in terms of like the other domains, so like um, instead of speaking, listening, uh, reading, writing, and then think through like tier B, C instead of just tier A, reach out, leave a comment below. Let me know if this um, was beneficial to you. And as always, subscribe because that helps me to want to make more of these videos um, in the long run. I think it's going to be helpful for all of us um, because, you know, these videos will live somewhere and you guys can reference them as you please. So yeah, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.